So there's a lot going on currently with, you know, the news cycle as of late, obviously. But one of the most important stories is what we are learning from Ghislaine Maxwell. Um, apparently, unsealed court documents showed that Bill Clinton was, in fact, on Jeffrey Epstein's island, and he was reportedly seen there. And when he was asked about it, I guess Jeffrey Epstein laughed it off and allegedly said, well, he owes me a favor. So there's a lot going on, and a lot of wealthy people may be implicated, and Fox News actually decided to talk about this. Janine Pirro and Tucker Carlson had a conversation about this, and I actually don't disagree with what they're saying. Like, they did a relatively good job at accurately presenting the information with regard to this case. But there's one thing missing from the reporting. We'll see if you can spot it. So the question is, did Bill Clinton visit his close friend Jeffrey Epstein's island, Pedo Island, with two young girls? New court documents suggest that in fact he did. Why isn't this front page news? Judge Jeanine Pierre was the host of Justice with Judge Jeanine. She has thoughts on that. Judge, great to see you. Good to see you too, Tucker. Well, you know what? Here's the bottom line. Did they care about Bill Clinton when he was engaging in sexual relations in the Oval Office with an intern? No. Did they apologize for him? Yes. Does the mainstream media continue to forgive him? Yes. If it were a Republican, it would be totally different. Look, what we've heard about in this Epstein case are Democrats. We've heard about Bill Richardson. We've heard about George Mitchell. We hear about Bill Clinton. Everybody says, no, no, Bill was never on the, on the plane, except he's on the manifest 26 times. And then we say, no, no, they, he wasn't on the island, except we now have testimonial uh, evidence, identification evidence by Virginia Roberts, who says he was on the island with two young girls. And that evidence is significant. And they can call Virginia Roberts the, you know, a liar till the cows come home. But she is the woman who has a picture of herself at the age of 17 with Prince Andrew's arm around her waist in someone's home with Ghislaine Maxwell looking at her. Ghislaine Maxwell of course, now we find out what a monster she is because she not only arranged all of this, she sought out girls who were vulnerable. She groomed them. She taught them how to take care how to massage men and take care of them sexually. But in addition to all that, in addition to scarring these young girls for life, she also engaged in these underage sex orgies. She is a monster. And for all those people who said, oh, you know, she should get bail. No. No, she is as bad as Epstein. And the fact that she is continuing to say, you know, that she didn't do anything is absurd because there are so many victims in this case. And I got to add one more thing, Tucker, because I know we're short on time. Now, you interviewed uh, Alan Dershowitz on Friday. One of the things that I find stunning is that Alan Dershowitz actually says, you know what, it was really only two misdemeanors that we represented him on in Florida. Yeah, two misdemeanors with 13 victims. And then he says, you know, I didn't really know him that well, except he stayed in his house. And then Dershowitz said, well, I was never involved in that part of the, of the plea agreement that involved a non-prosecution of unidentified individuals in the future should they ever be prosecuted uh, uh, for any crimes involved with me, conspirators with me, who I suspect is Ghislaine Maxwell, along with a whole host of men, powerful, rich men, who as always get away uh, uh, without paying their dues to the justice system. Okay, not bad, pretty solid segment, except they didn't address the elephant in the room. I'm sure you know what that is. Donald Trump was photographed with Jeffrey Epstein and or Ghislaine Maxwell again and again and again. So the question is, why can't they take their accurate criticism here of Bill Clinton and apply it to Donald Trump as well? I mean, I get that he wasn't implicated in these unsealed documents per se by name, but there are videos of him with Epstein oogling women, laughing with each other. They were clearly close. So if you're going to say, well, all of these, you know, uh, wealthy elites are connected to Epstein, how do you leave out Donald Trump? I mean, I think we all know the answer to this. It's because they are Republican Party hacks. They're willing to talk about sex trafficking insofar as they don't touch their sacred cows. They don't touch members of their own team. So if Donald Trump is also seen with Jeffrey Epstein, you know, we're not going to talk about that. But we will call out others for not talking about what we want them to talk about. So, I mean, if you read that Kyron at the bottom, it said, Media ignoring ties between Clinton and Epstein.
Yeah, and I'll grant you that. The media isn't necessarily talking about this. But let me ask you this. When MSNBC was covering the footage of Donald Trump that was released with him joking with Jeffrey Epstein, looking at women together, why didn't you guys cover that sufficiently? And why now is MSNBC not talking about this and how Bill Clinton and Alan Dershowitz maybe are implicated. I mean, is it maybe the case that if you can call out somebody else for being inconsistent, being a hack, that you should be able to see how your own bias is also affecting your reporting? I mean, the inconsistency here, the level of hackiness that we see is irritating, and I'm not trying to both sides this because we're talking about Fox News, but you see, this is really one of those cases where both sides don't know how to cover this right? Because you have wealthy elites who are Republican and Democrat tied to Jeffrey Epstein, a notorious sex trafficker of minors, right? Ghislaine Maxwell actually attended Chelsea Clinton's wedding, so nobody wants to touch this in mainstream media. But, you know, for me, I hate all these fuckers. They're all probably guilty or, you know, at a minimum, they have to be investigated. Look into them. So definitely look into Bill Clinton if his name showed up. But also look into Donald Trump, because if you're sitting there laughing with Jeffrey Epstein at a party, looking at women, if you're photographed with him and Ghislaine Maxwell multiple times, I think that that warrants further concern among law enforcement officials, wouldn't you say? Isn't that reasonable? Now, look, I am willing to grant them that there is nuance here. There's room for nuance in this situation, of course. Maybe it's the case that Bill Clinton's relationship with Jeffrey Epstein was, you know, deeper than Trump's relationship with Jeffrey Epstein, because Epstein had connections to a lot of people. Ghislaine Maxwell was seen photographed with a lot of people, right? So maybe it's the case that there are degrees of guilt, but I mean, after Donald Trump literally just wished Ghislaine Maxwell a monster, as they say, well, how could you ignore Trump here? How could you not point out the elephant in the room? Well, it's because they support Donald Trump. It's because they support Donald Trump. It's so weird that there's this blindness here. And, you know, you have these bizarre conspiracy theory groups like QAnon, which is just batshit insane, which basically suggests that Donald Trump is, like, in power to crack down on pedophiles. I'm probably butchering what they think, but, like, they are supposedly exposing other celebrities who aren't guilty. So these conspiracy theorists have been saying that uh, people like Chrissy Teigen and Ellen DeGeneres are also implicated with Epstein, which is untrue. But yet the one person who they worship, basically, who has been seen photographed with Epstein multiple times, no questions there, no conspiracy there. It's just so weird. Like there's, there's this double standard and it's very clear that American politics is team politics. You pick a team and your team is right no matter what and the other side is wrong no matter what. That's deeply frustrating. There's no room for objectivity or impartiality. We just do what we think is going to help our team get across the finish line. And this, uh, you know, segment from Fox News was perhaps one of the best examples I've seen of that. Mike is the worst progressive on YouTube. Please don't subscribe to him or become a patron. David Dole is so much better. Trust me, folks. He's doing a great job. He really is. Okay?